Europe was a veritable hotbed for Spinosaurs. Baryonyx, Ceratosuchops, Riparovenator, Iberospinus, Valley Bonavenatrix, Protathletus, and they keep on coming. There are so many known from just bits and pieces. Bits and pieces that tease of absolutely enormous fish-eating beasts. A super bizarre diversity of all types of long-snouted predators. There's a lot of things we now know about the distant past that seemed impossible only a few decades ago. Discovering the colors of fossilized animals, fragments of collagen and dinosaur bones, and even finding near-complete remains of previously enigmatic animals like Dinochilus and Spinosaurus. But there's still a lot of things we don't know, and never will. The fossil record is a spotty and broken mess, very incomplete. Even as we answer some questions, others remain frustratingly unanswered, and even more questions are raised. Evolution, missing links, behavior, coloration, all will be explored on Paleo Mysteries. Spinosaurs are really strange. No, not for their anatomy, but yes, also for that. But mostly because more keep being found all over the place and often in the same place others have been found, but they are all super fragmentary. There are the nice specimens, Baryonyx, Suchomimus, Ichthyovenator, and Irritator. Then you got your fragmentary Ceratosuchops, Riparovenator, Suchosaurus, Gristatusaurus, Siamosaurus, Spinosaurus, Sigilmasasaurus, the Moroccan Spinosaur, Protathletus, Iberospinus, Vallibonavenatrix, Oshalaya, and Camariasaurus. All of which are variously known from some spots in South America, Northern Africa, and across Eurasia. Without a doubt, Europe was the epicenter. You see, the entire fossil record for these animals is garbage, but they keep being found in Europe. If their fossil record is overall pretty bad, but more and more keep coming out of Europe, then I would think that might mean there really was just a super strong presence of these dinosaurs in Europe, as opposed to everywhere else. There could also just be super bizarre bias in European rocks that preserved them better than all other sedimentary deposits anywhere else in the world, but I think that is a harder geological and ecological pill to swallow. The chunk of European rock that keeps popping out the long-snooted beasts is called the Weldon Supergroup, located in southern England. This giant, lower Cretaceous chunk of rock has continued to release these animals ever since the discovery and publication of Baryonyx back in the 1980s. That discovery also happened to be revolutionary in the understanding of the anatomy and biology of the Spinosaurs as a whole, and is the main reason why the Spinosaurus in Jurassic Park 3 looks like a giant Baryonyx with a sail. Otherwise, we would have been treated to a Tyrannosaurus with a sail, which would have been quite neat in a retrospective paleoart history sort of way, but not much else. Baryonyx also led to the realization that all of those crocodile teeth that had been eroding out of the Weldon rocks for centuries may have really been Spinosaur teeth the whole time. After all, the only part of Spinosaurs that is actually crocodilian in appearance is their teeth. Turns out that, technically, the first Spinosaurs to be scientifically illustrated and described were teeth from the Weldon found all the way back in 1820. They were named Suchosaurus cultridens. These teeth were misidentified as crocodilian for around about 200 years, which is technically one of the longest cases of taxonomic misidentification ever recorded. It just so happens that Suchosaurus is now considered a nomen dubium because it is still rather hard to separate genera and species on the basis of teeth alone. At best, the Suchosaurus material is just a generic Spinosaur of some type but cannot really justify that really cool name. Aside from that stuff, the incomplete Ceratosuchops and Riparovenator are known from the Wessex Formation. And then there is a giant Spinosaur from the White Rock that has yet to be given a scientific name. It may very well even be a Spinosaurine as well, the group that contains the exceptionally large Spinosaurus and its closest relatives. Spinosaur material is rare, but their teeth aren't, with reports from England, Spain, China, Malaysia, Japan, Thailand, Algeria, Cameroon, Morocco, Libya, Niger, Tunisia, and Brazil. 
More dubious spinosaur material, including teeth, may extend the group into the Jurassic of France, Tanzania, and Niger, as well as late Cretaceous China and Patagonia. Spinosaur teeth are specialized and distinctive compared to the teeth of all other known dinosaurs, possessing their own unique list of identifying traits. You cannot determine entirely new species of dinosaurs on teeth alone, as one cannot determine one species from another in this way. But you can easily tell a Spinosaur tooth from any other known dinosaur group, though obviously not so easily from crocodilians. However, even then, enough research has now been done on Spinosaur teeth to be able to easily tell the difference between Spinosaur teeth, croc teeth, and even the somewhat similar teeth of plesiosaurs. That list is pretty much just super specific textures and shapes on the outside of the tooth. The Spinosaurid teeth found throughout the Weldon rocks were originally thought to belong to the only known Spinosaur from those layers, Baryonyx. That was until verifiably non-Baryonyx Spinosaurs came out of the same place. On top of that, the teeth span a good chunk of time over 24 million years, so to expect them all to belong to Baryonyx when every place that has Spinosaurus has more than one is no longer reasonable. This led a group of researchers that includes Chris Barker, Darren Nash, and Neil Gosling to reanalyze and describe a single Spinosaur tooth from a collection of teeth from the Hastings Museum and Art Gallery of East Sussex. Their work was published in late May of 2023. This collection of teeth was found near the village of Netherfield in West Sussex from the Purbeck group of rocks, which is a big old layer cake of rocks underneath that Weldon supergroup I prattled on about earlier. This layer spans from the latest Jurassic to the earliest Cretaceous. This location, information, was left with the fossils as a note, so the team cannot be 100% confident that they were from there, but if they are, this would be quite important as terrestrial vertebrate fossils are quite rare from that layer and Spinosaurids have never been reported from the area. The main objective of the new research was to attempt to see if the most diagnostically baryonychine Spinosaur tooth in the collection could be defaulted to a baryonyx identification, as had been the norm for most Spinosaur teeth for the last few decades. The tooth the team looked at is labeled HASMG369A. The team tallied up all of the tooth traits they could observe with a microscope and placed them in a software matrix that placed the tooth with a bunch of known teeth, including baryonyx and the stuff that was given the name Sucosaurus, as well as 1300 some odd teeth. The team did a phylogenetics or cladistic test with the tooth, which is usually used on more complete specimens with more diagnostic bones. They did what is called a discriminant analysis and a cluster analysis. Some of these tests used a technique that had more to do with morphometrics, the quantitative analysis of form, a concept that encompasses size and shape, so it takes the size, shape, and anatomy of the tooth into account and finds what it is most like, assuming that would belong to the owner's closest relatives. Data from these analyses are used to make these cluster or cloud graphs, giving more general or probable identities. The results of the cladistic, discriminant, and cluster analyses clearly supported the tooth as belonging to a Spinosaur. That much was assumed already by the general shape and form, but one should always use tests to double check. What was most interesting from the tests was that the tooth could not be confidently attributed to the specific genus of Baryonyx, potentially meaning that England had an even more diverse array of Spinosaurs than previously thought, and perhaps for far longer. This continues to back up previous findings of diversity in both English and Iberian localities. Not much more can be concluded about Spinosaurs from these teeth until more complete specimens are found, though it does continue to provide evidence that Spinosaurs originated in Europe, as the diversity in the region increases and increases in older rock layers. Only time will tell the identity of who left their teeth behind in ancient Europe's many rivers and canals.
For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Thank you.